guys. I'm sure you guys have heard of the Flying Fox, and many people have been hanging these on longer handles, and we're here to prove to you that size does not matter. We're gonna hang this guy on a 12 inch handle. <laughs> Hey guys, brand new WhiskeyRiverTrading.com. I've got here a Flying Fox head and an ultra premium 12 inch hatchet handle made by Liam Hoffman. And we're gonna put these two together. We're gonna hang this head on this handle and we're gonna show you all the steps involved in that process. So before we get started, I wanna go over the tools that we're gonna use today to hang this ax. Now, this couldn't be done with a pocket knife and a rock in the woods. This isn't something that you need a bunch of equipment to do. Um, we're going to try to do it with the least amount of tools possible that we have here in the shop. Uh, normally I do have a rasp, however I'm going to try to do it with just a draw knife today. And uh, But even with just a basic you know, pocket knife here, you can get an axe hung and set the wedge with something to hit it with, another log or a rock. So, um, But here's what we got. Besides a handle and a head, you have to make sure that these two fit. And this is something online, uh, which is based on measurements. So look at the handle, figure out the measurements, measure your head, and then pick out the handle that fits. Next would be a draw knife. This is our, our draw knife that's about to come out, hand forged by Todd Elder of Elder Anvil. And it's a nice small one. It's easy to put in a toolbox, um, and it works great for hanging axes. Next would be a file. This is a, a steel file. Um, I use this, and you'll see later down the road, to chamfer the edge and um, knock down the ridges inside the eye. A pull saw. This is a Japanese style pull saw. This one's from Harbor Freight. Uh, they only cost 10 bucks. You can upgrade to a silky saw, um, and there's a huge variety of these. These are Japanese pull saws. A tape measure is usually good. A couple pens, Sharpie. Uh, these are for tracing out the the, the head on the handle. Some sort of protection for the bit. This is, keeps this bit away from you and keeps you from cutting yourself. It also keeps the bit from getting damaged in the process. Some axe wedges. I usually like to start with a handful of them, just in case. Sometimes they, uh, you don't cut them right or, or something goes wrong. So there's a variety of axe wedges. And then this protection rubber piece that we have here. We'll be adding these to the website. Um, not exactly sure what we're going to call them, but this goes in the vise and protects the axe, head, and the handle, depending on what you're clamping. And then last is some boiled linseed oil and some wax, some sort of coating to coat the handle and the head out when you're finished. So right here we've got a, a nice bench vise. This is a Kanko 135, and this is not a necessary tool for this. You guys can use whatever that can clamp this to the surface you're working on. A, a C-clamp, welding clamps, uh, I've seen bar clamps used, um, your basic woodworking clamps, I don't have any handy. Um, but anything that keeps that handle from moving around on you is good. This is, again, not something that's necessary. So, we start with this rubber guard. You put this in here, this has got spring to it, you can see this. It's like a thick woven piece. So it slides down in here, and this protects the handle or the head from, from being marred by the jaws of this vise. Most vices have teeth on the inside, and your, even your clamps would, would cause that. And this is a little bit easier than a, a rag. So it moves with the vise, it just hangs out in there. So we're gonna start by chamfering the bottom here of the head, and that means setting a bevel this way and taking this sharp edge off of the bottom of the ax head. You can kind of see it here, how it's sharp. There's also ridges inside this eye. That helps lock the ax head on, but it's good to knock those down when rehanging. It makes it go on a lot easier. So right here, I've just got a, like a Nicholson steel file that I had laying around. And this is good. We can get this in here. Knock down those ridges. Get 
You don't have to take them all the way down. It's just nice to smooth them out. Sometimes in the foraging process, they get a little bit of, uh, they get a little sharp. So this is the chamfering process. You don't have to do a lot. It just takes that, that sharp edge off the, the edge and helps fit the handle a little bit better. So our next step is clamping the handle in the vise and then setting the head up on here. Now this, now this handle is really close to fitting inside this, um, this eye. So we don't really need to do it for, with this one. However, um, if you would need that, if the handle needed a bunch of fitment and shaping, you take a pen or a pencil and trace the inside of this out. And then if you need a kind of a pro tip here, if you need a smaller pen, one to fit further down, just pop the pen out of the, out of its shell here and, uh, and use that. Okay, so our next step is to start draw knifing this eye. This is a draw knife that we sell and it's always important to keep these as sharp as you can. Tear out is a big issue and tear out is when you dig it too deep and it like chips off off the wood, uh, you do not want that. You can always um, you can always slow down with what you need to do. You can't put wood back once it's removed. So this is a lot of shave some wood off, check the head, shave some wood off, check the head, and um, working in parallel or side by side with the piece. So you want to whatever you take off this side, you have to take off this side um, to make sure that the head is aligned right. So. Yeah, let's get started. I'm pretty sharp from the back.
you're fitting this, you gotta almost pretend like those ridges inside that, that head aren't there. Uh, heads that have ridges inside the eyes, you want to fit the handle to the inside. So like, it touches the ridges of each, the, the points of each ridge in there. Once the head is fit and its final fitment, that will spread out and it will be touching those ridges. And then once it's wedged, it will lock in with the wedge, with the ridges. So here, you can check this out. Kind of see what I'm talking about. So for those of you familiar with cabinet making, you can use a draw knife kind of like a card scraper and take very, very, very small bits and curls of, of wood. So by just putting a little bit of force in, dragging. So that'll give you some very, very fine um, material removal. So this, uh, another thing I want to show you is there's this ridge right here. You want to get rid of that and you want it to taper into the, the head. This is what, uh, we call a ninja shelf. So that's where premature breaking will happen if you have that, that ridge where it just jets out into the, uh, or jets into the ax head. So it's important to take away. tight so we're gonna mark this here and cut it off a little bit so we have some, some room to work I usually leave it about a half an inch tall on the top so we'll use our pole saw to do this but we'll remove the handle or the head first so 
So a lot of clamping and unclamping. This has two different sides, and this works on the pull stroke. Yeah, hence it's named the pull saw. Uh, designed in Japan years and years and years ago. So I usually use the, the more fine side than the aggressive side. However, the aggressive side does work really well. This is a great tool also for cutting a kerf. And the kerf is the notch that is, or the slip that's cut in the top of the axe handle in which the wedge goes into. That flares out the top of the handle and then locks the axe head on. All right, so grab yourself a straight edge. This here's a steel ruler or really anything that's straight. We're gonna go ahead and mark where we're gonna cut on the top of here, cut this kerf. So um, just find your center line. And then draw a nice center line mark. So that's going to be where you're going to cut here with the full saw in a little bit. So grab your pull saw. It's good to start on the front edge here and then the back edge on the back. And then you bring those together and that will keep it straight. Cutting a curve straight is actually like a really hard thing um, and kind of takes some practice, so just take your time with it. So there's the front. Stop and look and make sure that you're getting it cut straight down. Ripping, I find that the more aggressive teeth work better for going with the grain like this, long ways. Remember where the bottom of the head was, uh, right here where this kind of this line is. So you want to stop about a half an inch on hatch, it's about a half an inch higher than that. With so that way you don't aren't fearful of that wedge splitting the handle out when it when it reaches the bottom. Curve. 
So with a kerf, if uh, if it's cut off center or crooked, uh, don't be bummed out. This is this is something that's easily fixed. Cut your kerf again next to it, straight, secondary kerf, how you would like, and that's purely aesthetic. Um, as long as you fill that with wood, uh, that's kind of an old timber framing uh, saying. As long as if you take away wood, as long as you fill it with more wood, another joint, like a Morrison tenon joint, that is just as strong. So go ahead and um, recut your curve and thinking about it as that wedge is just there to flare out the top of the handle to lock that handle in and the bottom is locking the bottom in. So you're just pinning it like this and you should see a little bit of a flare out at the top. So yeah, so we're ready to go to our next step, get this head on here for the last time bang it with the handle and show you guys how to set a wedge. All right, so get your axe head. This is the final fitment. Put it in here, a little tap, two good hits. Our buddy Roy says that uh, anything more than two hits, uh, not only does it not help, but it actually pushes that head back down. So we only, we only stick two hits on this. So you can see that now this is cut into a, uh, a height that's that's manageable to wedge. So we get to select a wedge. We'll use, I think we're gonna use a canary today. This looks really pretty once it's, once it's wedged. So we stick this wedge in here and then we mark it for the width. So this one doesn't need much taken off. It's uh, happening. <clears throat> but we do need to take a little bit off. Pull saw that off here. Actually, let's draw a knife it off. I don't think a pull saw is going to work for that. Again, it's all about just trying different tools. This can be done with anything. Literally this pocket knife you could do this whole process with. I mean it would take you forever, but but it is doable. So we're shaving like an eighth of an inch off of this here. And this will kind of curl as it's as it's set down in the handle. So now let's check. Let's see if it'll fit. Yeah, that looks nice. So checking that this handle's or the head is still set down on the handle, we can look at the top and set it like that. I usually just set the base of this handle on something hard. This is an anvil surface right here on this vise, and then we can whale away on the wedge. So I'm going to use a smaller. Uh, nice broad face. Set it like that. So it's one of those things that you, you say like beat it like it owes you money, but this has, you can see how this is starting to flare up here, where each side of the handle is tipping out. That's actually locking the head on the handle. So we're going to give it a couple more hits. Yeah, that's tight. You can kind of hear the, the sound change as you sink that down and it becomes like a more solid thing. You feel like then you're hitting like a steel pipe that's not gonna have any give. So once that's set in there, we clamp this back in the vise. We're gonna go like this. And we're gonna cut this off here. Now I usually leave it about a uh, quarter of an inch proud above above the top of the head and that just keeps that that wedged uh, flared out piece to help maintain that head, that head being locked on. So we're gonna cut this tape off here for a little bit. That's so I can move that. Get the 
saw started. So that doesn't look pretty, but it'll clean up here nice a little bit with some well, linseed oil. But one, one important thing is when you're driving that wedge in, if it cracks at all, um, not to worry. It seems that when a wedge is sticking out and it cracks for some reason, once you cut this off flush, you'll never notice that that wedge was cracked on, on the top side where it sticks out on the handle. When it's in the handle, it's being locked. It's like super compressed in there. So, um, so yeah, typically I would sand this. I guess I've got a grinder here with some sandpaper on it. I'm going to touch this up, sand the top of the eye, get any um, uh, rough edges away, and then we'll throw some glow and see what else. You could typically do that with regular just sandpaper in your hand, but the grinder's sitting here with a flap disc on it, so. You could always use a file too, you know, to clean up that top. So, grab a rag. Spoil linseed oil. This is the fun part. Get that dark, dark tone of that hickory and that canary. This is already a dark handle to begin with, but if this was a really white handle, you'd be able to see that color difference with the canary. So. Well, linseed oil is great for the rest of the handle too. As you, as you can work it in, you kind of want to get it hot. So you just back and forth a lot. That creates friction, which is warm, and it works the oil into the into the wood. Opens up the pores in the wood. These Hoffman handles come already coated in a, a special coating he uses that help them be stored longer and ship easier without being damaged. So, yeah, but check that out. Let's cut this off and see what this looks like. Look at that thing. These are available on our website as a complete flying fox, the head. The head comes with a handle as it comes from Council Tool with a 16 inch handle factory. These are uh, very commonly rehung on whether it's a shorter handle or a longer handle by guys. We don't sell loose heads. These are complete axes from Council Tool. We encourage you to make it how you want, no different than buying a vintage head at a flea market. Um, whether that's you bang the handle out as soon as you get it, or you wait until the handle breaks um, and, and then you rehang it on the handle of your choice. So there's been a whole variety of people modifying these on whatever length they are. As far as council tool goes, it's it's impossible to hang it on six different style of handles for guys. It's just manufacturing wise, it's a huge headache for them and for us as dealers to try to keep them in stock. So check these out on our website. Um, orders over $130 ship for free. This handle is a, the 12 inch Hoffman handle, which is made by Liam Hoffman. There are, there is also a 16 inch, which we're calling the flying box replacement handle, which has a larger eye in it and is designed to be a premium version of the flying box handle for throwers and guys who just want a fancier handle. So that's available on the site. You can also hang this on a 19 if you're, if you want to fit it. Um, and, and then hopefully we have a 15 inch handle coming from him very soon. So. Now is shameless plug time, besides the fact that you can buy this at Whiskey River, the head, and also the handle at Whiskey River. We have wedges, Purple Heart, 
walnut, mahogany, and canary like we used in this. And we hope to have more species available. Uh, feel free in the comments to give us any suggestions on species of wedges you'd like to see available. The hatchets are 80 cents, uh, medium wedges are 90 cents, and the double bits are a dollar. So super affordable, there's no reason to overpay for premium wedges. The next thing is the draw knife I use. This is hand forged by Todd Elder of Elder, Elder Anvil out of North Carolina. We worked with him and we, these are having leather made and are going to enter our guild project where makers are involved and we help support them. Someone does one piece, the next guy does the next piece and then we retail it on our website for you guys. So this is something that we got together with him on to offer a ax made draw knife and it works really great for this and I'm sure it would be great for people who make furniture and other things so check these out when they drop on our website. Next thing would be the bit guard that I used to make sure that the axe head did not cut me while I was using it. This we sell by the foot on the website. Uh, you can find it in the miscellaneous section. It's a rubber bit guard that squeezes the bit. We use these for shipping all of our axes and it's easy to saran wrap or tape to the head. Um, Short of swinging the axe with this attached to it, it's not going to cut through the end of this. So great for long-term storage or um, making sure you don't cut yourself. Um, next would be, and I guess last, would be our camp wax. We didn't really show this um, in this video. However, this is a really great alternative to boil and seed oil um, for treating the head, the handle. This comes in three different sizes, a one ounce, a two ounce, and this is a five ounce tin. Um, it's beeswax based and you get it a little warm, leave it out in the sun, and you're able to wipe it on the handle. Creates a great waterproof uh, coating. Uh, use it at camp, wax canvas, you can use it on that. Your skin, your boots, your gloves, saddles, um, anything that's steel, uh, your beard, your hair. So yeah, check this out on our website. It's uh, in our, our miscellaneous section also. So. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications when we drop new videos. We're always dropping new videos and remember to um, sign up for our newsletter, which is at the bottom of whiskeyrivertrading.com. Check that out and uh, we send out weekly, if not bi-weekly updates with inventory, special deals and, and news about Whiskey River for you guys. So be good, whiskeyrivertrading.com. <laughs>